My name is Brian Androsian, and this is my wife, Brittany. Uh, we're both on staff here at New City, and we want to share a little bit about our um, story here on Mother's Day. Uh, we've been together, we've been married for uh, 10 years next month, 10 years in June, and uh, we're just coming up on 20 years since the first day that I asked her out. So we, we've uh, been together some t for some time. But today on Mother's Day, we want to share a little bit about our, uh, our, our story and our journey with children one in eight women struggle with infertility. And so though it's something that we don't talk about a lot because for a lot of women, it just causes a lot of pain to talk about. I do think it's important for women to know that they're not alone in this. Um, they're not alone in their infertility journey. We've struggled with infertility all 10 years of our marriage. I think a lot of women in Christian culture identifies um, success as being a mom, um, success as being married and being a mother. And when you can't when you're not married or you can't be a mother biologically, you feel like a failure a lot. Um, it's uh, it, it was tough, especially in the beginning, to um, talk about this and, and kind of figure out what that means for our family. In May in 2017 was our first Mother's Day here at New City Church. Um, and as I was getting to know some of the women here and talking to them about what my life was and sharing my um, story, I had a few women pray over me on Mother's Day of 2017. They brought me back in one of the kids' ministry rooms and they just prayed a bold prayer that Mother's Day of next year, we would have a child. And so a year later, when we still didn't have a child in 2018, um, it began some harder questions between Brian and I um, and we had to just surrender and say God we're you know we're not going to try doing this our way anymore and what are you leading us to um, that summer led us to foster care classes we got our first placement September 1st of 2018 a little boy 10 years old who was an adoptive placement for us going into foster care was um, scary uh, maybe more so for me uh, it's kind of something that I don't know that I really let on to a lot outside of to Brittany, but it's especially going through classes and things like that. You learn about um, just what kids go through. And there's a lot of questions of like, am I, how in the world am I capable of doing anything? I mean, do, doing this, you know? We took six kids into our home um, in the past two years since we've been licensed through respite care and through full-time placements. But definitely our hardest placement was um, our full-time placement, who was an adoptive placement for us. It is very hard to struggle with infertility, have a kid come into your home, call you mom, and then leave your home. Um, it was February of 2019 when he left our home. Um, foster care is all about reunification. It's always about the best interest of the child. It's always about a permanency plan for the kid. Um, and we were not his permanency plan. Um, we love him, we pray for him daily, but it was hard to go from struggling to be a mom to be a mom to no longer a mom. I think Mother's Day of 2019 was my hardest Mother's Day that I ever had. Um, when I look back to Mother's Day 2019, I can see God there, I can see how he was providing, but at the time I didn't know it. Uh, Mother's Day 2019 was the first time that I met this wonderful woman at New City Church. Um, she was pregnant, she was young, and as she was sharing a little bit about her story, I remember being angry with God, angry about how it wasn't fair. This young woman who didn't plan to get pregnant is pregnant. Um, I remember driving home from church that day and just crying out, crying about it. And I didn't know that day um, that I was meeting the woman that would give birth to our son. Uh, fast forward a little bit to August 2019. Um, we were down in South Carolina, and Brittany got a phone call. Um, didn't know who it was. I didn't know who it was from, but she was talking to this person and, uh, for, gosh, maybe 45 minutes for a long time, and she was just weeping. And she hung up, and and I was like, "What's what's going on? Is everything okay?" And she said, "I I just got a call from a friend of ours, who says that she knows someone who wants to talk to you about potentially adopting her son." And that's all. That's. That's all we knew at the time. Like we didn't have much information. Um, come to find out he was gonna be born in a month. Yeah, we got our call on Thursday. Um, we set up a meeting to meet her <laughs> that Saturday um, with our mutual friend here. Um, we met at New City Church with mm -hmm. her um, and talked. And that Saturday, she made the decision to place her child for adoption with me and Brian. Yeah, so it was, it was a whirlwind from there. Adoption is expensive. Adoption is expensive. Um, even doing open adoption, it is still, it was $25,000 that we were looking to raise within one month. Yep. Um, looking at that and just, we didn't want to get our hopes up. We've been disappointed so many times before. Um, we kind of just prayed and said, God, if this is where you're leading, then we believe you're going to provide for this. Yep. 
it was scary. Like it was tough to look at it and be like, how is this even gonna happen? But there's no way to explain how it all came together outside of God. Like it was, it was a, in large part people right here at New City that just rallied around and showed up. Yeah, so after all the fundraising, after all the praying, um, Theodore was born on September 17th, 2019. So we were waiting and just, there's a lot of just sitting in the hospital room waiting to find out uh, you know, how the birth went and what happened. Then all of a sudden the door opened and they just wheeled him in. It's, it's hard to put to words what, what, what it was like right then of yeah. a month and a half ago, having no idea that this baby he existed, you know, not knowing anything about this. And then all of a sudden this child's being wheeled in and they're saying, this is your mom and dad. It's one of the very first people that I told about Theodore. Um, they were my mentor in foster care and they asked me what we were going to name him. Um, so when I told her the name, she just started crying. She started showing me text messages of her reaching out to her small group and her tribe um, that God placed the name Theodore on her heart on Mother's Day. Um, and so she had been praying for this Theodore baby for a long time, thinking that he was going to come into her home. Um, but I was just so grateful for the way that God and saw my heartbreak on Mother's Day and reached out and had other people praying for me the entire time and for our son. Mother's Day can be a hard day for many women and for many different reasons. Maybe you're struggling with infertility, loss of a child, loss of a mother, um, whatever it is. I think it's important to know two things. One, you're not alone. Um, people love you and most importantly, God loves you. And so if you've never heard that before, you are loved, you are not alone. Um, and two, I just think it's very important to fill yourself up with foundational truths because if this day is going to be hard for you, that's okay. Let it be hard. Um, you can cry, you can grieve, you can do whatever you need to do on that day, but don't sit in that pain. Our faith in Jesus does not come for what he does for us, but it comes in the character of who he is. And I think that when we know the character of God, we know how much he loves us, um, it makes those hard moments a little bit easier. When we know that we're deeply loved and we know that with his grace and with his love, um, we're going to be healed eternally and we're going to have no pain one day. Our, our worth with God didn't change because we had Theodore. Um, you know, we didn't become mom and dad and then all of a sudden now we're what it looks like to be a Christian couple. Because there are people that struggle with infertility that are never, that may never have kids, that may never pursue adoption. And that I think it's important to remember that your worth isn't dependent on children. And that it's not a matter of if you, if you can't have kids, then you need to figure out a different way to have kids. You matter to God regardless of your status as parents or husband, wife. May is National Foster Care Month. Um, and I think that just ties right along with what you were saying. You don't have to do everything. You may not even be called to be a foster parent. You may not even be called to be a mother. Um, but I believe that we all can do something little and we all can help change lives. Um, everyone here at New City Church that prayed for us, that supported us, that knew our story, that loved us, helped change our life. And we are incredibly thankful for that.